everyone, James Mansell here bringing you yet another video. Oh my god, you guys, I'm so excited to bring you an iconic 90s bombshell look. That's right, I'm feeling inspired. I want to invoke the work of Alexis Vogel. I want to bring back that 90s bombshell look, but in like a drag variant because, well, I wasn't built that way. So, let's try it. I want to do this today for you guys. I have a beautiful wig that really invokes this kind of energy, so I need the look that really sings at home. So. Let's get started. I have my eyebrows already glued down. I know, shocker, we don't have to go away for this. So let's just start going in with our makeup. Now, when I was doing research on this, apparently they were not afraid of putting on makeup for this. Like, I'm gonna be using my pancake foundation, but first things first, I gotta block out my beard with some color corrector. And I'm going to like the bottom of the pans on this one. This is Kimchi Chic. It is her orange citrus palette. And you can tell I've been, I'm basically dabbing a different <laughs> shades of orange at this point. I'm about to start into her because I've gone through everything at this point. I didn't use the shimmer. That that broke on its own because I travel with this and I don't protect my stuff. I'm also crazy and when I travel, I usually will put my makeup as a check bag, which is not what you're supposed to do. It's not what you're supposed to do at all. But I live life on the edge. I live in Las Vegas, so gambling is just a thing we do. I gamble with whether or not my makeup will shatter or not if I put it inside of an airplane's, you know, check baggage. And oftentimes I lose much like a slot machine. Every time I do my makeup on live, I start doing my color corrector and people are still just in the comment section like, what are you doing to your face right now? It's like, it's 2024. Like, do we really not know what color correcting is? Like, I feel like this was all the hype back when like YouTube was really starting to go. Like, you know, the Manny Mue era is a very thing. Like every beauty guru was doing color correcting and it was like the new hot obsession. Like I remember having to like sell it at Sephora. It's like, has it just suddenly fallen out of favor? Are there lots of queens walking around with very visible beards under their foundation? I I don't know. Has it gone back into hiding? What is up with color correcting? Why no one has any knowledge of it? All right, so let's put our cream on. And this is like very minimal compared. Like I see some queens that do a full on like Paul Bunyan beard all the way up to their sideburns. Like mine is very minimal. I only cover the spots that I really have trouble with is right here. All right, I'm using Derma Blend. I remember I got turned on to this stuff at DragCon New York, the first year I ever went. And lo and behold, they gave me my shade for free, which was very, very nice and like a gratis bag. And I have not been able to get a sponsorship since. <laughs> they hooked me to their product and now I have to have it. I keep coming back. Is that how that works? Is that how people get like hooked to stuff? No, I remember hearing the like rumblings of Durham Blanton back in the day. Like this is what people used all the time in the 80s. Like that was their real heyday. Like if you didn't have the Max Factor pan stick, RIP for the Max Factor pan stick, we all miss it. Actually, I don't miss it. I never actually got to use it. I wasn't doing drag by the time it actually went out of production. <laughs> but all the queens you talk to, if you ever meet an old queen, ask her about the Max Factor pan stick and she'll tell you stories about how it cost like $8 and you could do your whole face with it. It lasted forever and it was the fullest coverage cream ever. And now we all have to pay, you know, $17 for Krylon sticks or more. I actually think even more than I think Krylon sticks are like $40. Like makeup is so expensive. Like every time foundation starts to go, I'm just like, okay, I gotta take out a second mortgage on my house. House of Laughs, only on WOW Presents Plus. And for once, my eyebrow is not fighting back, which I'm really shocked about. Like normally I'm sitting here fighting for my life with this brow coverage, but she's actually working out. The summertime is coming back up, so I'm gonna have to start using something stronger than just glue stick pretty soon, because in Las Vegas, come the second number of my brunch, my face will be on the counter when I look down. Like it is, just something that happens, you know, with heat and everything. <laughs> I start switching back to Prosade. Okay, that's covered. Let's set it. Now, I have to say, I appreciate you guys in the YouTube comment section. I do my wiglets. You guys have been really awesome, but a few of you in the comment section have mentioned something to me that has completely broken my mind. Like, I can't think of anything else but this. Someone mentioned that they think I'm getting the beautician's lung. And I had to look into it. Like I went down a whole wormhole. I guess it's like what hairstylists get after like years of inhaling like chemicals from like hair dyes and stuff and like not wearing proper masks, like while styling hair and doing it and coloring, that you start to get like upper respiratory issues. And by God, I have been clearing my throat a lot lately. <laughs> it also doesn't help that the only liquids I consume are corn syrups. So, you know, it could be a number of things that are contributing to this. I don't know, you know? My body is a medical mystery, but I went down a whole wormhole trying to discover what this was and like, how long can I go before I have to go see a doctor? Turns out a while, so I'll be here for a minute. <laughs> if I have to have something removed, we'll work around it, okay? Just don't address it. Just don't call attention to it, all right? Don't be rude. Let's start going in with our contour. I'm using here Morphe Amber Shores just to do a little contour. 
I recently switched back to doing a cream contour because honestly, I've noticed like when I like, take photos of me and drink brunch, brunch, I have no contour when that huge like flash hits me. So it's just like, I had to switch back to doing more than just powder. And also with this, like it's very subtle the way they do it. So I used to do like the cutting card and everything, but if you want that 90s effect, they didn't really have the cut cut cheeks like that, unless you were like, you know, a drag queen doing that, which again, a lot of this stuff comes from like Kevin Aquan and like supermodel makeup and drag queen makeup, especially it's all like folded into itself. But now with Alexis Vogel type makeup, she really tried her best to make everything look kind of like blended down. Almost like that's how your skin looks, you know? It's just trying to emphasize what's already naturally there. So I put this right at my cheekbone. So that really brings it out. And I'm just going to set that with contour. All right, so going into the Lunar Beauty palettes. This is already reaching its limit. <laughs> this is so sad. I'm the worst at rebuying makeup. Like I let things go to the literal like last minute. Like look at this. This is, you can't do anything with that. But that's the one I need, so we're gonna try, okay? <laughs> Just drag our brush around the corners here. This is the life I'm leading, okay? I put myself in this peril. Let's tap it on. I, I used to do it with like a card and everything, but like I've been like slowly pulling away from doing that. I don't know, like, I don't really like the way it looks anymore. I got bored with it. But we will be doing the card for something else when we get to the eyes, that's for sure. All right, I'm gonna start blending it out right away. Okay, everything about that makeup is like blended. Like that 90s Pamela Anderson, like corn star makeup. It's super blended, super high, and super smoky. Let's get started on our eyes, shall we? And using my dollar dollar bill, I'm going to align this up with my eye. And I'm gonna dip into the Bottle Blonde palette and I'm gonna be using the black out of it, Lash Lift, this girl right here. And we're gonna start smoking up our eyes. So I'm gonna start packing my brush with this. And when I was watching like the video, like she has a full video of Alexis Vogel. Like she released the DVD and everything. Like I kind of wanted to get it just so I could like have this artifact from history, but she actually sells a tool, which looks like a small mouse pad that was repurposed as like something you use for makeup. It's called like the shade chamois. Aaron Parsons did a whole video like going along with it. It's fascinating, but I didn't have it in me to buy like the $40 little mouse pad. I just might just to have it. Like maybe I'll, maybe I should try it and like I'll probably end up loving it and convincing myself it's actually like something worth investing in as opposed to like this that I just use some trash and put it on your face and make it work. Our angle. Yeah, I got really fascinated with the idea of possibly dipping into Alexis Vogel's makeup because she has like actual makeup makeup. I, I wanted to buy some of it just to like try it out and see how it works. Like especially the eyeliner, like this water activated, I'd never used that before. Like I remember getting some water activated makeup and being really scared to use it. <laughs> Cause I felt like if I have to control the formulation myself, it's gonna be a recipe for disaster. There's a reason I'm not a painter, okay? I have very limited paint skills when it comes to arts. I was never the best at that. I'm gonna put a cut crease on because maybe I have to have a cut crease. Like I just noticed that's just what I feel like looks the best on me. It all just boils down to that. We're gonna try and smoke this out the most we can. And I'm trying to like put my crease higher because I have this problem with me where like I get a little lazy with the makeup and sometimes my crease is just too low. Like it's really low on my face and it doesn't need to be there. So I'm trying to like work myself out of that habit, like break it so that I have more of a lift in my face. Like looking at it, like it's almost like showgirly the way it looks, like 60s showgirl. You look at those old pictures of them. They always have like these swooped up highs. Like the references that go into this makeup always like floor me. It's 60s Las Vegas. As you know, they're painting for the back row. Only in this case, you know, they're painting for the bottom shelf at a gas station, you know, that's covered behind a bunch of other magazines. You could just see the logo and the makings at the top of someone's face. Like, <laughs> we all remember that the Playboys used to be in the very, very bottom shelf at the gas station. At least where I grew up, Playboy, the penthouse, all of them. Is that a thing anymore? I don't think it is. Like I go to gas stations here in Vegas where you think you'd see a lot of like the girly mags like that. Gas stations I go to, they don't have them there. I guess that's not really a thing anymore. They're not buying them like that. But you could always find them there back in the day. Maybe that's just a thing that was phased out. I'm gonna go in with the Horse Girl palette. I believe it is Saddle Up. Oh yeah, where you use Cult Classic for my brows, I usually do. Just to get it going. And 90s brows are very, very thin, so we're not gonna emphasize too much on like a big, thick brow. Gotta be thin, thin, darling, thin. She's thin, darling. Now, when I think of makeup like this, I always think of like one Pamela Anderson, who's probably the most famous one. But, like a lot of women had makeup like this. 
Like, especially, like, the women that were in, like, Muscle Mag and stuff like that. Like, this makeup carried on for quite a bit, like, into, like, the early 2000s. Like, I remember lady wrestlers, like, Trish Stratus, Victoria, even Lita. Like, they all had this kind of, like, bombshell 90s kind of makeup. And, like, even Muscle Mag, I remember looking through those and, like, those beautiful, like, athletic, like, super fit girls with these long hair extensions. They're always in, like, the most beautiful bikinis. Like, it was really, like, fascinating. I think early sessions, wrestlers especially, like, Sable, the way she looked, like, she didn't look like a wrestler at all. It, she kind of wasn't, but still, like, you know, if you dig into that story, apparently she was quite unliked for how much of a wrestler she wasn't and how much she, how little she wanted to actually learn. Which is like, I love that kind of grift. It's like, I'm not learning how to wrestle, but I'll take the fame. Fame and the money, I'll take that. But I'm not, I'm not getting hurt. Screw that. If she managed to work out that contract, good for you, girl. <laughs> I'll take the job, but I'm not gonna work. But no, like, she had an amazing look, and it was totally patterned after like this '90s kind of bombshell look, like that Kelly Bundy, Pamela Anderson, like artificial blonde kind of vibe, like the platinum, platinum, platinum hair, and they usually have like roots coming in, the eagle claw bangs, and the smoky like eye makeup and red lips, or the pink lipstick, like pink, pink, pink lipstick with huge coral liner, which is probably what I'm gonna do today. Like, they look like a Mycene doll. <laughs> Y'all remember them? Like, not quite brats. Mycene dolls were like, you know, the older, they're a little tackier cousin of a brats doll. But this kind of look was like such a fascination in the 90s. And it seemed like, it was like the 1950s all over again a little bit when it came to like beauty standards, because it was all about like lots of makeup, Big blonde hair and huge boobs. Like they're obsessed with boobs again in the 90s. As a product of the 90s, I can recall, I remember from memory, people were obsessed with boobs. <laughs> it was the era of the Baywatch and like, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Playboy was at its pinnacle. Like people were obsessed with that kind of look. Like that was what was being like pushed out. Everyone's like, yeah, that that look, I like that. I think what I like most about like Pamela Anderson and people like that is like, especially in her case, she knew exactly where she stood with this and how oh, I'm using um, pure oxide right now from Bottle Blonde. She knew where she stood with this, but she also like took a lot of agency in it, you know? Like, yeah, I know they're like looking at me because of how I look and my body and all this, but like she used her fame and parlayed it into like, you know, charity work and raising awareness for animals and stuff. Like she took her fame and ran with it and used her power and took it back. All right, I'm going to be using the hot liner in white. As you can see, I've been getting a lot of love out of this. <laughs> this has been a game changer in my makeup. And she's still going, baby. Trixie Cosmetics, hot liner. I'm gonna blend this into my other eye and I'll be <laughs> right back. All right, now what I like about this eye makeup technique is honestly, it kind of gives me a guideline of where to put my eyeliner to a point where like, I'm not kind of guesstimating. Like I still kind of exaggerate a little bit more, but at least I have a guideline, which again, like this is a drag technique. Like this has been done forever. I used to do it quite a bit, but like very poorly because I knew what I was doing. So just hearing it from somebody that does it all the time is actually kind of helpful. Because I remember I made poor attempts at trying to do this kind of makeup back in my early days of drag and it never came out the way I liked. So I just kind of abandoned it and just assumed it wasn't for me. But now that I know a little bit more about applying makeup, I try to get it it's like, oh yeah, that is a nice look. I do like the way that looks. But I was trying to like research the like, why was this look so like impactful? Like why did it make, have such a grip on a lot of us? Especially like little gay boys like me, like I was held by this look. I would like love women that look like this. Like Tracy Bigum and like Emma Anderson and Nicole, Kelly Bundy. And like all I could really come back to like when I ask people about it, it's just like, they just liked how powerful they seemed. Like it very much was like a power fantasy, like using beauty and all that stuff. Like honestly, do whatever you wanted with it. Like it's really fun. And like, yeah, like on the flip side of that, they were sex symbols, but a lot of them like didn't feel like they're necessarily that exploited. Or like, at least in Pamela Anderson's case, it's like, yeah, she had like a terrible tragedy happen with her and the tape and everything. But like, she didn't let that like completely run her out of town. Like she bounced back from it really well. Like she let the people make their jokes and she moved on with it. And she didn't let that stop her from her ultimate goals of like saving animals. But yeah, peak Pamela Anderson makeup like this would have to be like barbed wire. Barbed wire and VIP were like peak Pamela Anderson makeup lore. When she looked her utmost glamorous and the most over the top. And VIP, I'm convinced, it existed for gay people. <laughs> so like, <laughs> I know it was marketed massively to be like this like hot sexy time with Pamela Anderson and beautiful girls and tight clothing. 
but it was really, really gay when you watch it. The same thing goes for Stripperella. Like, they were very gay coded shows. And like, I like the fact that like she had a hand in some of like producing on this. And like you can tell that was something she wanted to make sure was included. Like she wanted to make sure it was a safe space for like gay people to watch her shows and not feel unwelcome. Like I know it's not exactly peak television, but that was my Charlie's Angels, okay? VIP. Like that was my, you know, 1990s schlock TV that I just love and ingested. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little dumb, but we watch it because it's dumb. It's fine. It's okay to like indulge in that. All right, we gotta add a little bit of brown into it. So I'm gonna go back in with Horse Girl. A little bit of cult classic, not a lot. Just to warm it up here a little bit. So I know it's like watching these makeup stuff, it's like a lot of like browns, blacks, and grays that are like making up her look. But it's like a nice, fun, smoky look with like usually like an amber or something really shimmery right here which I will get to when we get to it. Probably when I'm close to putting my lash on. Now, one thing I want to try out that I thought was kind of bizarre is like the bottom eye makeup. Alexis Vocal would blend out with a sponge. Now, I don't have a sponge, but I do have a beauty blender that's kind of old, so we'll use that. And like she would blend down the eyeshadow under the eye to smoke it out with a sponge. And like I've been doing this and lo and behold, I actually like the way it looks. Cause like for the longest time, when it comes to like under eye makeup, I'm kind of the laziest person in the world. I'll usually do like one thick line or like just a little bit of like shadow underneath and call it a day. Or even I've been using my pencil where I just kind of like fill it in with a pencil and move on. I don't really blend or anything, but blending it like that, especially with just a little shadow, it looks nice. I will say that, like I can see why she was obsessed with it. All right, I'm gonna do the other eye off camera and I'll be <laughs> right back. Welcome back, the eye makeup is done. Now I'm starting with the Kimchi Chic Moist Concealer in white. And if you wanna save at Kimchi Chic Beauty, I can get you 15% off with the code James Mansfield. Look at the good I do. All right, let's add a little bit more to the other sheet here. All right, let's blend this down because we have to have bright, bright, bright makeup. Now, I've been since trying to do away with using so much Cody powder because honestly, it's really hard to get. <laughs> like, it's never in stores whenever I want it. So I've been trying to find alternatives. And like, unfortunately, every other one I've been using is freaking expensive. But again, I was turned on to a new one. I'm going to be using MAC Studio Fix Powder. I was actually introduced to it by Deer from Twitch, my Twitch sister. I've been doing a lot of Twitch lately, as y'all may know. It's like my newest thing, I love it. I've recently returned to it and I've been loving live streaming so much. And like everyone there has been super cool and super inviting to like help me along and like learning it because again, I feel everything has passed me by. Like everyone's live streaming now, so I'm jumping onto it and I love it. And everyone's been very patient with me. <laughs> in my new learning journey. We have been playing video games so far. We just finished Until Dawn. And I just say it was a good game. I cannot wait for the remake to come out. I gotta figure out what our next game is going to be. Something horror based, I imagine. But we're using Max Studio Fix in Frosty White. Cause I was told by Deer it is very slay. So I have been liking it. I like how light it is. Cause a lot of the problem I'm having with Cody powder is like, I feel like it gets too cakey on my face. And after a while I feel like it just doesn't do anything. All right, let's do our blush. Now I'm using Lunar Beauty. Now with these makeup looks, their blush kind of like sits here on the apples of their cheeks. So that's what we're gonna do. And bring it up a little bit, but mostly right here. Like that's where the punch is all at. Cause it's supposed to be like a beach bunny kind of look. Now, as far as shimmer goes, shimmer only exists on the eye in this kind of bombshell 90s makeup. So that's what we're gonna do. Like highlighter on the cheek was not really a thing. I'm gonna take Kimchi Chic. And I'm gonna take a little bit of my frosty white here and just put it right here on the brow bone. Oh yeah, we are going right back to it. Yes. Right underneath my eyebrow, not over it, under. Oh yeah. <laughs> that is dialing back. Like I'm ready for the pages of Playboy. <sighs> I remember when I was like younger, I'd draw like imaginary like female characters and like they'd be on the cover of Playtime like in like a bed sheet with like big hair and like the super smoked out makeup with the lip liner and everything. Obsessed. Let's go in with Horse Girl. We're doing Stir Up Trouble and we're gonna start doing our big 90s lip liner. Now normally you use like a lip liner pencil like Mac Coffee or something, but I'm using eyeshadow because lip liner sticks on me look crumbly because I have a very strong stubble. Like no matter how far I shave down, I still have that problem. And we are over drawing 
which I also loved about Alexis Vogel is like she's very big on overdrawing and overemphasizing the lips if you don't have them. I'm just like, that's drag, mama. Let's do it. It's a shame she's sadly no longer with us. I would love to meet this woman because she seemed fascinating. Like, I loved anyone that wore like big, bright, bright red hair and a full face of paint at 10 o'clock in the morning. And like, she lived and breathed this makeup. And we're doing it a little different. We're actually giving us a Cupid's bow. Cause I feel like it's kind of necessary to really get the look going. We are stepping away from the camp queen mouth for just this video. All right, I'm trying to cover a lot of ground because when I start putting the lipstick on, a lot of this work could actually be lost. So I'm trying to be very like careful on how I actually put it. <sighs> we're gonna go in with Eden from the Horse Girl collection from Trixie Cosmetics. And I'm gonna make sure I leave that lip liner going. It is very Mycene doll. Like, I think it was already known as Madison, like the blonde Mycene doll. She wasn't Barbie, but she had like the full, like bright pink lips and a deep plum lip liner all around and like bright blue eyeshadow all the way up to her eyebrows with like a big old cut crease and wing eyeliner. Like the Mycene dolls were drag queens. Like they were everything. So you have to finish this off with lip gloss. I am using Lunar Beauty in Starlight. And that really tops off the look. Ooh. You could of course like use all sorts of like black eyeshadow to really smoke it out more if you wanted to. Like the smokier the better, honestly. But as soon as I throw the bangs on and everything, like it's gonna be the solid look that we're going for. So I just gotta throw eyelashes on and I'll be right back with our final bombshell inspired look. Ooh, let's go to the beach. <laughs> Welcome back, this is the final result. Ooh, I look like a bombshell. Ugh. <laughs> Let's go to the beach. Oh my gosh, like, I love this. I'm wearing a styled up version of the Babarella available at James Mansfield Beauty. Yes, I styled this recently on my live stream when I did a bunch of hard front wigs. She's a hard front, but she is serving that 90s bombshell look, which is what inspired me to do this makeup look today. Also, I wore it on live stream. People have been telling me I've been looking much more GG on my live streams for video games. I have to ask this question right now, guys. What the hell does GG mean? What does that mean? Why do you speak in codes? Just be straight up with me. What does it mean? Okay? I can handle it. I swear. I swear you won't get blocked. <laughs> now, I have to say, I love doing this makeup look. It's a lot of fun, like, walking down memory lane and just, you know, exploring makeup looks I always was inspired by. And now that, like, all this information is out there to figure out how you achieve this, like, I had no idea Alexis Vogel had a full-on, like, tutorial she released back in, like, 2003. Like, it's insane. And I love the resurgence of the popularity of this kind of look. Like, I'm glad this is coming back. I'm glad we're wearing too much makeup again. Like, let's bring that back. Lots of hair and lots of makeup, okay? It's always a good look. And I want to give a huge shout out to my wigglets. Jacob, Ernie, Duke, Roy, Jess BKZ, Vera, Cuervo, myself, Sponge King, Pearface, Steve, so many kitties, Jake, Larissa, JT, Christine, Curtis, Miss Mosey D, Romeo and Juliet, Selena, Rose, Darth Caray, Catalina, Louise, Patio Furniture, Michael, Miss Lansing, Eliza, Maureen, and Veronica. Thank you so much, Wiglets. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye. Now hit the outro! <laughs> click here and watch some of my other videos. Unless you're a flop, so click it! It's me, Jay Cool. You know, like Jay Lo, only it's cooler. This is a nice place you got here. Oh, there's food. Where's the wine? Make room for me. I'm still Jenny from the block.